In this video, I want to talk about some of the problems which are posed by the issue of endogeneity, and I'm going to allude to how IV estimation can help this. But we're going to cover in the next video the sort of intricacies of IV estimation in detail. So the idea is, let's say we have some sort of model that I've got a dependent variable y, and that's determined in a linear way by my independent variable x plus some sort of error. So remember that one of the Gauss-Markov conditions was that the expectation of this error term, given my independent variables, xi, has to be equal to zero. And we talked about how this might not be the case under three different circumstances. So the first circumstance is if we have omitted variables. So if we have omitted variables from our model, then if these variables are correlated with our x term, then omitted variables cause a violation of this above condition. So the expectation of the errors given our independent variables xi doesn't equal zero. The second way we can get endogeneity is if we have some sort of measurement error. And in specific, it's not just measurement error in any variables, it has to be measurement error in the independent variables. So we've got some measurement error in our x here. The third and final way for cross-sectional models that we can have some sort of violation of this Gauss-Markov condition, and hence we can have endogenous errors, is if we have reverse causality. So reverse causality, what does this exactly mean? Well, the idea with reverse causality is that the sort of primary process which we're interested in is in how x causes y, but there may also be a way in which y causes x. So this is often referred to as some sort of selection bias in cross-sectional models. Okay, so what are the problems with this particular violation of the Gauss-Markov assumptions? Well, the most important problem which it causes is that the expectation of our OLS estimator no longer equals our sort of true parameter beta. In other words, OLS is what we call biased. And furthermore, it's not just biased. We know that as n tends to infinity, in other words, our sample size gets bigger and bigger, then it happens to be the case that our OLS estimator does not tend to the true parameter beta. In other words, our estimator is not just biased, but it is what we call inconsistent. Okay, so those are some of the problems with trying to estimate our model using OLS, namely that the estimates which we get from our OLS estimator will be incorrect. They won't be centered around the true population sort of error. In other words, they'll be biased. And also, as our sample size increases indefinitely towards the population size, then we don't have a convergence of our sort of estimates towards the true value either. But what's the sort of logic behind why we do have this issue? Well, it becomes clearer if we sort of write out our model again. So we've got sort of yi equal to alpha plus beta xi plus ei. So it's just what I had up, up at the top here. I'm just rewriting it here for a bit of convenience. So the idea is that the first sort of thing which we're interested in first and foremost is how x affects y. So that's the sort of process of interest which I've just sort of labelled one here. So as x increases, if beta is greater than zero, then we tend to see increases in y as well. So that's all okay as it stands at the moment. But the problem is if x increases, we know that that's going to be associated with some change in our error term because one of these three things must be acting if we have endogenous errors. So in the event that our sort of omitted factor is correlated with our independent variable, so sort of reason one for endogeneity, then if it's positively correlated, then increases in x will cause increases in this omitted factor, which in turn will cause some increase in y. But the problem here is that we're only interested in process one, but process two happens as a byproduct of process one, and 
sort of process three hence happens because of this sort of omitted factor or because we have some sort of endogeneity. So the changes in Y which we witness aren't just due to changes in X, there is also some sort of component of Y which is solely due to changes in the emitted factors. So you can sort of think about changes of Y as being composed of these two different effects, of which only one of them we are interested in. And the problem with endogeneity is that we're not able to just change our independent variable without changing some of these emitted factors or without causing some sort of change in the error term rather, which means that there's going to be another channel which causes changes in Y. So it's going to confound our sort of estimation technique or at least our OLS estimation technique for estimating beta. So to conclude, we have some issue with our OLS estimator because we're not able to untangle the effect of X from this error term. However, as we'll see in the next video, IV estimation can actually allow us to untangle X from this error term and allow us to get at least consistent estimates of our true population parameter beta.